Hi folks, my name is Kevin Souza. I'm coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm going to talk to you today about proximity marketing services. And that is uh, <laughs> quite the phrase, but it's not old. Uh, excuse me, it's not new. It's actually been used for years with apps. And, uh, but now uh, companies can use it uh, affordably versus what it would cost to have an app to do the same thing. Um, let's see, welcome Ned. I just noticed Ned just came in the room, welcome. My name is Kevin Souza, and again, I'm talking about proximity marketing. I'm gonna go through a PowerPoint presentation on how this will be able to help uh, clean centers, addiction uh, treatment centers, and uh, not only uh, wherever your particular location is, but literally countrywide. And uh, I'm really excited about this because uh, I got involved with proximity marketing just about a year and a half ago when this company was formed um, by four gentlemen, Kevin Marino, Don Smith, Don LaPlume, and uh, Andre Derry. And they decided to put together a program of services to help people advertise any business or any center or any organization at all. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and go right on screen share so that uh, you guys can see exactly what this is all about. And then we'll have questions and answers later. The name of the company is Aservia. Now that comes from the Latin derivative, Aservio, which means to serve. And this company has been helping uh, people move upward and forward with their businesses and organizations uh, all over the world, not just uh, in this country. And <clears throat> now proximity marketing, I'm gonna give you an example. Let's a couple of examples, let's play what if. What if you're in the market for a home and you know exactly what you want. You want a single family, you don't want a split level, you want one garage, you want four bedrooms, you know exactly how many acres you want, what the price is gonna be, what your principal interest taxes and insurance is gonna be, you know what you wanna pay. And all of a sudden, your mobile phone notifies you about a realtor who has listings quite close to exactly what you're looking for. Wow, what a coincidence you might say, right? Uh, let's use another example. Let's play what if, uh, let's say you're a gal and you go to uh, Mary's Beauty Shop, you've been going there for five years and Mary treats your hair. Well, you pick up your phone, you call Mary's Beauty Shop, only you get a recording that said, sorry, due to unforeseen circumstances, we had to close. Thank you, everyone, for all of your patronage over the years. Oh, my goodness. Now what are you going to do? Well, all of a sudden, Mary's mobile phone notifies her about a beauty shop in town that's looking to help new customers. Wow. What a coincidence. Well, not really. That's proximity marketing. Let's give you an example, one more, about a major corporation such as Walmart. Okay, Walmart has obviously a Walmart app. And let's say you have that app and you walk into a Walmart superstore and you go through the department section, you go through the grocery section, you get to produce, and all of a sudden when you arrive at produce, your phone notifies you that apples are on sale. Whoa, how in the world did they know that? Well, because you were in the proximity of that message. Now, with your Bluetooth enabled, you're, you're, you've actually given your phone permission to look around for any messages within the proximity and see it and then notify you about that message. And what's very important to understand initially is that uh, proximity marketing does not send messages to mobile phones. That's vitally important to know and understand. Instead, the user enables their phone by the virtue of turning on their Bluetooth. Not everyone has their Bluetooth on, but at least 65% of the world who have mobile phones do. And as a result of that, that user has just given their phone permission to look around, find a message, and notify the phone user about that message. That's how it works, not it sends a message to the phones. Okay, so let's talk about this. The world's most exciting marketing te technology in the mobile phone industry for any business organization, and we call it Go Services. Uh, I'm going to show you if you can still see me on camera. This little device, okay, right here, and uh, it's about the size of a double-sized Oreo cookie. And uh, what this does is you can program this in your back office with any message and link. A message up to 40 characters and a link, no matter how long it is, that you want 
the, u the, the user of the phone to be directed to, okay? So the industry is huge. Just to qu quickly talk about that. Right now, it's a $300 or $400 million industry. By the year 2025, it will be a $45 billion industry. And, um, you know, here's, here's the, there's two problems with proximity marketing. Number one, it is highly expensive, right? Walmart paid well over $100,000 for their app. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it was clearly six figures, right? And most businesses and organizations, depending on their size, uh, don't have that kind of money to spend. So the other issue is branding. And so everybody knows who Walmart is. And so people will just say, hey, I wonder if they have an app because they know the brand, the name, okay? And so those are the two biggest problems with proximity marketing. What we've done at Aservia, and, in, and, and incidentally, I'm an independent affiliate with Aservia, but I'm one of the leaders and business coaches and trainers. My wife and I have traveled all over the country in the last year and a half at various uh, huge company events uh, and have spoken and taught and uh, helped people with proximity marketing. And so uh, a survey had decided to make it affordable for businesses and the fact that the branding is not the same as, say, Walmart or McDonald's or whatever brand name you can think of just at the top of your head is not an issue because of that affordability. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, <clears throat> currently... There are businesses that are using proximity marketing and our Go devices that are in several sectors. Storefront businesses, I just mentioned, hairdressers, retailers, restaurants love this because they can put a buy one, get one free or whatever um, and use that. Uh, cleaners, contractors, service providers, electricians, mechanics, plumbers. Uh, it's huge in the sales profession because, like I mentioned, with realtors, realtors love this. Uh, and uh, entrepreneurs, people that work from home, and so forth. But uh, for events and organizations, it's huge. Uh, we have, just to give you an example, a nonprofit organization in Arizona by the name of Scott Foundation, and it's for foster children, okay? And Colleen Walski, the president and CEO and founder of this organization, purchased uh, Go devices, the Go services from us, and uh, she has a testimonial that I'd like to talk about. In her testimonial, she said, she also is an author, by the way. She just created a book. She's the founder of a nonprofit organization working on having a positive impact on children in the Arizona foster child system. She was at a restaurant for a book launch that wasn't related to her foundation. And she turned on one of her Go devices with a simple message that said, help foster kids like me get out. That message was broadcast for just two hours. And again, it doesn't send messages to the mobile phones. The mobile phones that were Bluetooth enabled saw the message. And she had 297 hits on the website within two hours and over $7,000 in donations. So she said, clearly, I can't imagine a much more powerful demonstration of the effectiveness of this product. And anybody can contact Colleen at the Scott Foundation and, uh, you know, verify that, that that exactly, you know, happened. We have, I mean, a, a plethora of testimonials that I'm not going to get into here, uh, but in our Facebook group alone, um, you, you'll just hear testimony after testimony after testimony of um, the Go services. Now, before I go to the next page in the, in the profile, I want to make, make something clear. These devices, <laughs> this will shock you when I say this, do not produce results. Now, that was a strong, almost negative statement. But what I mean by results is this. The quality of your message, the congruency of your message, where you strategically place these devices, and the audience that it's targeting has everything to do with results. What you're buying when you take these devices and, and buy Go services is you're buying exposures. That's what you're paying for. The results are based upon your messaging and the target audience that you're having these in, in, in front of so that people can, you know, look at this and say, hey, um, I, I'm in the market for this and I need this service. Okay, so that's important to understand and know. Uh, like any advertising, for example, if, uh, if you were to place an ad on television or radio or newspaper and you didn't get results, if you were to have a billboard ad, which is not easy to track results, 
uh, putting ads on buses, again, that's not easy to track results unless you're asking every client that's coming in, where did you see us? How did you find out? Um, which I'm, I'm sure you guys do that. But, um, or patient for you, in your example. So um, these, these produce the, the exposures that you need, and it's up to you to uh, place the message. I'm going to give you another example what my wife has done. We own 16 of these devices personally, my wife and I. I have eight of them. She has eight of them. She strategically placed one of these at the Louisville, Kentucky Airport. Now, where she placed it and the message that she placed it on had everything to do with the success that we're having with that one device. She walked all the way up to the security section, and right before that security section, there's a Starbucks coffee, and there's a long table called a mobile phone charging station. We've all seen them at, at airports. They have several of them. And so what she did is she went over to that table. She put double-sided tape on the back of one of these, and she stuck it right up underneath the table and hit it at the airport. Uh, the message that she's putting on this is what's called in the online world, and, and if uh, the CIO is on here, um, Paul will understand this. Um, there's a, something called a CPA offer, which is a cost per action offer, where when somebody puts their email address in, you get paid by the company. All they did was put their email address in. Well, this happened to be a promotion for Starbucks, for a, a coupon, a discount at Starbucks. Well, consider this. The placement of this device was right near Starbucks, and every email that somebody puts in to get that free coupon, my wife gets $1.50. We're getting 400 to 600 exposures a day from that one device at the Louisville Airport. So that's an example of the message being congruent with the environment, and you know we, we control the results based upon the messaging and where we're placing these devices and where, where they are. So that's, that's just uh, an important uh, point I wanted to make. So again, it's wireless. It fits in the palm of your hand. I carry two in my pocket, and we hide them strategically. And we're also placing ourselves strategically based upon what we're advertising on our message so that the audience is targeted toward what we're actually promoting. And so there's two services we provide, Go Basic, which is to create messages, and then Go Plus, which is to create advertisements. So this is an example where you see this gentleman holding the phone of what a Go Basic message looks like. The bold words that you see on these messages are the up to 40 characters uh, to, uh, you know, to, to advertise. And right under it is the green link that it takes people to. That's a basic message. And in your back office, you can program basic messages unlimited and choose on the fly exactly which one you want to use based upon, again, where you are, where your devices are going to be, and so forth. So that's the basic message. I also discovered that even though they allow 40 characters, less is more. <laughs> and so whatever you want to say, uh, your whole goal is to get them to click that link. And so you can creatively, you know, create uh, phrases or statements or questions that will get somebody to use their finger on their phone to click the link. That's the Go Basic services. Now, the Go Plus, you're going to be excited about this. This enables you to not only have the basic message and link, but when they click on it, it takes them to what we call an interstitial page, which means before they get to Clean Sight Center's uh, website, .com. So... Uh, you get to put a header, a description. Uh, you can put an image or even a video uh, so that, you know, uh, you get results when you build a no like, and trust factor. And so this, the Go Plus, helps you. It's the upgraded service. Helps you to build that no like, and trust rather quickly right on someone's phone before they click on the main site that you want to get them to. And I have a little treat for you here. What I did was I created a Go Plus ad, just a sample, okay, of uh, Clean Slate. And here it is. So you'll see, and I need my glasses here because I'm reading, are you struggling with alcohol, opioid, or drug use? And, of course, the video is the same video that's on your front page. And then uh, are you struggling with alcohol, opioid, or drug abuse? Would it be okay if Clean Slate Addiction Treatment Center helped you? Now, I said center, not centers. Here's why. Because, again, they may be, let's say they're in Dallas, Texas, at your Dallas location. And so there's one Clean Slate Addiction Treatment Center in Dallas. 
That's why I said center, so that, you know, it just brings it all localized. And then the words underneath it says, we're literally saving lives with effective outpatient medical treatment of the disease of addiction. We provide hope because you can do it with our help. Click more below and call us right now. Now, this is my slide, but I did something even further, is I actually created the, the, the site itself. And if you guys want to go to your cell phone and type in gobroadcast.info forward slash clean slate, that's gobroadcast.info forward slash clean slate, you will see what this looks like on the mobile phone. But I'm going to show you before you do that, <laughs> I'll give you the link again, is um, right underneath there's a green button. And this is save to Apple or Android wallet. So the person that reads this may not have time to read it right away. They can save it to their wallet on their phone. Now, the only thing I didn't make uh, clean slate was this link to save Apple or Android wallet because that's done internally in your members area in the back office of a Servia. So this goes actually to one of mine that has nothing to do with clean slate, but I gave you this to, to show you an example. Then there's a phone number below that they could just click on with their finger to call and you can change that phone number to whatever you want. Uh, and then there's a, a share button so that they can share to Facebook. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to just click on it and go there. Now, there it is. Now, what I discovered is that that image that you see there happens to be the last blog post that you guys did. So I'm thinking that perhaps uh, the next blog post, whatever image that is, the next time will, will show up here. But that only works when you use Facebook debugger to change that photo to a different photo next time. That's a free service. And again, uh, Paul may may know about what that is, um, and if not, I can always show you how to do that so that you can just refresh that link so it just goes to the next photo in the next blog post, the, the newest blog post that you guys have. So let's come back here. So um, it says click more below or call us right now. Well, if I click more, where does it go? It goes to cleanslatecenters.com. And so this little interstitial ad called our Go Plus services is very, very powerful and effective, especially when you see it on your mobile phone. GoBroadcast.info forward slash clean slate. And again, remember the Android uh, wallet save button doesn't go to, uh, it doesn't say clean slate. It's something different. But again, this was just a prototype of the Go Plus ad and how it would look. And just an example, you can make whatever word you want, but I just uh, created that um, using a little creativity just so that you guys could see the power of that. Let's come back to my slides. Let's come to the next slide. This is not spaghetti with different colors. <laughs> this is how many exposures each device is giving you. Remember I said you're paying for exposures just like any other advertisement. If you advertise on the TV or the radio and you get zero results, you're not going to throw your television out or the radio, right? That's ludicrous. But we've actually had some people in the past year and a half that we've been uh, in business uh, who've actually said, well, these, do these don't work. And so they decided to, to cancel. And yes, they do work. Every single device works. They give you what you're paying for, and that's exposures. What didn't work was their message the congruency of their message with the audience, our potential audience that was looking at those messages when they're staring at their phones. We all know that people are staring at their phones no matter where we go today, right? So this is proof that proximity marketing works. And um, so you get to track each and every exposure on each and every device that you use. Now, I'm going to just recap what you get in the basic, up to 40 character message, uh, a clickable link, easily programmed, just message and links are active immediately, uh, easy to use web-based service, and a real-time tracker of the Go exposures. In the plus, which is an upgrade, you get all of that. So you, the, the user sees that first initial basic message, and when they click on it, it goes to the ad, and, and like the example I showed you, where this patent-pending technology allows people to use graphic photos, YouTube videos, uh, you can choose from multiple ads. Uh, some you know, businesses use the timer date. There's a, an expiration date on there. That's not even appropriate unless you're offering some kind of a discount for a service that you're providing for a clean slate. But it can be saved and shared to any smartphone. Uh, the clickable information includes a phone and a website, and you can click ad sharing to your Facebook account. So the Go Plus service, what the company decided to do is they decided to allow people to have a seven-day free trial 
of the Go Plus services, and I'm going to talk about pricing in a moment here. Um, now, with respect to pricing, let's give you a quick example, and then I'll get right into the pricing. Let's play what if again. What if you hired somebody to stand on the corner near the, one of your centers with uh, a sign, and you paid the minimum wage for, for 40 hours, right? The average minimum wage, I don't know, what is it, $7 an hour? So at 40 hours, it'd be 280 a week. And so times four weeks would be a little over $1,100 a month if that person worked full-time, eight hours a day, five days a week with a street sign, right? That's quite expensive. Well, what if you had eight people do that? <laughs> and they were strategically placed in one street corner, another street corner, another block or two away here and there. You would, pay, you would be paying at minimum wage eight people full-time full close to $9,000 a month. <laughs> uh, for that kind of uh, exposure to, you know, clean slate. And again, this example might be a little ludicrous, but because I doubt you, you'd do that. But uh, I wanted to show you uh, the, the comparison. Uh, what if you had something that worked 24-7 that you didn't have to pay minimum wage for, but you got a 50% discount that stays in place even when the price goes up, by the way. And let's talk about the pricing. You can save up to 50% on the Go's. Now, um, you can get as many Go devices as you want. Uh, if you got eight Go's, it would normally be $259 a month, but uh, monthly subscription for eight Go's is $129 a month. And if you wanted five, it would be $99 a month. Uh, if you wanted three, it would be $69 a month. Uh, the company requires first and last payment, a one-time activation of $30 to use the account, plus shipping and handling, and then it's that monthly subscription. Should you decide after the seven-day trial on the Gold Plus that you want to keep, let's say you got 100 devices, right, and you wanted to keep 10 of them on the Gold Plus, and the others will all be basic. Well, $19 a month per Go unit, per Go device, is what it costs for the Plus service. There is a replacement cost, but it's only in the first year. If you, if you lose one, it's a $25 replacement plus shipping, but after year two, it's free free replacement if you lose any of these devices. And so um, there's also pricing for multiple units. Uh, as you can see there, 100 units is $1,600 a month. Uh, it goes all the way down to three. And the reason they don't have just one is because uh, we discovered that you really need three in order to justify the amount of exposures you're getting for whatever it is that you're advertising. Okay, so there's two ways to get Go services. Uh, most businesses, organizations, um, they, they become customers and they promote whatever they're promoting. Uh, others decide to join as an affiliate as well so that they can, you know, have an income if somebody decides they want to buy them from you. Uh, but you know, again, most businesses become customers and, and that's how that works. Um, also, uh, we're going to Dallas. Now, we're going to be 20 minutes away from the Dallas location May 25th through the 27th, which is next weekend. And we're going to be literally 20 minutes from that location. And so uh, it's going to be at the uh, uh, Gaylord Hotel, huge, huge place. Um, and so, you know, if anybody wants from Dallas location wants to uh, hook up and, uh, and talk, I'd be happy to do that with them. Uh, we have some events. Uh, we'll be speaking at that event. And... Um, um, and that's you know kind of the the the, uh, the 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 area that we went last time we went to a cruise um, with with a Serbia and uh, uh, that was oh I don't know maybe five six months ago so anyway that's my presentation I'm going to stop sharing and if everyone wants to unmute themselves um, I'd be happy to address questions and um, if you need any more information. Kevin, thank you for the uh, for the presentation. Um, just out of curiosity, when I think in the example you gave with the Starbucks at the Louisville Airport, um, now do you guys do you get permission from the uh, Starbucks to place that? Or are you guys just placing them kind of secretly? I mean, how, how does that work? Yeah. Well, first of all, it wasn't placed in Starbucks. It was placed outside of Starbucks, underneath the okay. table of the mobile phone charging station. And so you you didn't have to ask permission for that. You just hide it. And that's okay. what we did. We just we just hit it. Um, you don't have to hide devices, um, but if if uh, you're in a place where there's people that that possibly 
um, have a problem with uh, alcoholism and, and opioids and drugs, well, um, that might be a consideration to, you know, kind of secretly place one so that when people are looking at their mobile phones that have their Bluetooth enabled, they'll see you. And um, also, if you're doing seminars, like I had asked you uh, the other day, uh, if mm -hmm. you do seminars uh, at all, then, you know, obviously you want, you want to have a device there, maybe one or two devices there with different messages on it so that when people are taking breaks and looking at their phones, um, they'll, they'll see that you're there. You can even tell them, and by the way, folks, uh, your cell phone has one of our messages on there. Um, you know, so that's just another possibility. Uh, okay. And um, if, and I apologize if I missed this, but if, if we had, for example, if we got 44 centers and we were to have um, some of these devices uh, at, at each location for them to use, um, would we, would the message be, it's, is it customizable by location? So if, if one particular center was going to be at a conference um, and they wanted to set a message specific around that, they could. And another center in another state is is just out in the community doing outreach, um, and so so we can customize the message by by device. Is it or that's correct? And then all, okay. So then also, rather than having each individual center manager update that their own message, if we wanted to have um, oversight and have that message built and uh, delivered to the center by uh, one of our marketing folks, then w is that something rather than giving it a free for all? Because we, we need to make sure that we have a consistent and improved message that would be shared uh, through these devices. Yes, absolutely. It, it does make sense to uh, centralize it and to, you know, m even manage it from one location. Uh, if, you know, or uh, if you strategically had a, two or three people managing it, 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 what a, it that, that's, um, that's recommended because like you said, it would be a free for all. Um, and uh, you can store unlimited messages in your, in your members area. So you can pick and choose or even create messages, anticipate what you're doing, say three months, six months, and have those messages ready to just go ahead and activate um, you know, based on the devices, locations, and so forth. So you could be, for example, you could be in New Bedford, Massachusetts uh, location, uh, incidentally, which is where I was born and raised. I live in Kentucky now. Uh, and, and then someone in the Dallas uh, location has their devices. That person in the New Bedford location can literally program that device in Dallas in the back office. And uh, so it doesn't matter where that, that uh, centralization or where, you know, the people who are managing the devices are. Uh, so uh, wherever those devices are, they will be programmed with that new message instantly once you program it, once you give it, assign it to that device. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Paul, from your perspective, any questions for Kevin? <laughs> yeah, sorry, and I apologize for... Um, for joining a little late, Kevin. Um, so I missed, I think, the beginning part to, from a technology perspective in that yours works on both iPhone and Android. Um, is no, that... actually, actually, it's only Android. Oh, okay. So it's not. However, iPhone, iPhone um, we can thank Apple for this <laughs> because, because it's Apple's fault that they're not, uh, they're not conducive to proximity marketing yet. However, it's in the works, and it could be as soon as the next month, um, because Apple has opened up their their minds to proximity marketing based on the size of the market now. And uh, so, here's the thing, though: sixty five percent of mobile phone users in this country are Androids. I didn't believe that. Here's why: I have an iPhone myself, and I, everybody I know has iPhones. And so you know how it is uh, we, it, when the, the circle of influence that we have have the same as you, you figure everyone else does, but uh, that's not the case. Sure. So um, you're using basically uh, the passive Google platform and it requires both Bluetooth and location services. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's no application that someone can download that would actually allow it on, a, on an iPhone? Yes, there is. There called, is. Okay. It's called physical web. All right, so it's the same because we've we've talked to some other you know folks and it seems like it's the same 
you know, sort of situation um, based on what Google is presenting and what Apple is presenting for their uh, operating systems. Yes, and Google just made some major changes uh, which required mm-hmm. us as a company. And when I say us, I'm an independent affiliate. I'm not a corporate executive, uh, but I am one of the field leaders and coaches. Uh, it required us to have a recall of all the devices and then they just sent out all new devices to the entire to the entire country and the world uh, on their dime. The company. So you're gonna, get back, you're gonna get back into the airport. Yeah, the com- <laughs> yeah, the company did that, uh, which uh, impressed me because most companies would fold uh, when when Google starts changing the rules like that, and they have a an expense that would, you know, justify them saying, "Well, let's throw the towel in." And how long has the company been around? A survey has been around for a year and a half. I have personally known the executives of the corporation a uh, couple of years before they decided to begin a Servia. And um, Kevin Marino, Don Smith, Don LaPlume, these guys have the utmost integrity. Uh, they called me to become happily involved in the uh, business. And I, I refused them at first until after three or four calls over a period of a month or so, I decided to do it. So, yeah. These guys are good people, and uh, they're also I'm making some announcements at the Dallas event next weekend um, that I'll be relaying to my team members that are not there. Um, we've attended every event in the last year and a half all over the country, but um, when they start announcing at the event what's happening, I'm going to be relaying that information to to uh, you know team members and customers uh, as well. What is your breakdown between customers and affiliates? 80% customers. Okay. And 20%. And that's a good question. Can you guys share the volume of customers and affiliates like that? What 80% of what? Of a hundred of a thousand? No, there's, I, I'm not sure exactly how many there are. Um, 80%. It, it, it's about based on the size of their group, about 10,000. I think. Okay. Yeah. But how many goes does that, potentially mean you know any any numbers of implementations of goes out there no i don't have that number either that's okay. that's a good question yeah um this was asked on a previous call how long do your um goes last a couple of years a year uh the the battery which is easily removable if i put it up to my camera here you'll see a slot in the back there right uh, anybody can just take a coin and just twist it off the battery is a, a standard <laughs> uh let's see i don't have one yes i do it's inside the package but it's one of these little babies right here yeah and uh one year and just replace the battery and the the device will you said this is this is being recorded so if i missed in the beginning if i can get the um get the video i'll watch it was there is there a dashboard uh configure did you show that earlier in the call of how people kind of set those campaigns up i saw a powerpoint more than anything yeah i i just showed a picture of the back office um it's really very easy and very user friendly and there are also training videos uh, in the members area as well and so setting up is 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 a piece of cake and i help our customers personally uh as well so uh, Do you have any customers that would be, would be willing to be a reference? Yeah, I just gave one. Uh, in fact, um, uh, the Scott Foundation, the uh, Arizona uh, Foster Children Organization, uh, the CEO and founder of that organization. Uh, I don't know if you saw this part, but she, uh, she, she bought a few of these devices and went to a book launch that had nothing to do with the nonprofit group. She turned one on. And in three hours, she got 297 hits and seven grand in donations. And so she gave us a testimonial for that, of course. And uh, the other testimonials, you can see just a ton of them in our Facebook group, uh, Servia's uh, Facebook group. There's just a ton of testimonials in there. Okay. I think that's about it for my questions. Yeah, the other thing too, I don't know if you saw this piece, uh, when sharing to Facebook, when if you use the Plus service, uh, and I made an example of the uh, clean slate. Did you see that piece? You, you did. You said it was like the most recent blog post. That's correct. The photo that appeared in Facebook, well, I, I said, where does this photo come from? It's, a, it's, it's actually a, a, a baby. Well, it's a Mother's Day blog, I'm sure. Okay. It, it was the last post on May 11th that you guys did. 
Okay. And so I figured, okay, when they do another blog post, if you use Facebook debugger, you're familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you use Facebook debug debugger and put the main link, cleanslatecenters.com, in Facebook debu debugger and debug it, it'll change the photo, uh, sort of like cleaning cookies in Facebook, so to speak. And uh, it'll probably be the next blog post. So you could even strategically use the blog post with the image that's displayed, you know, uh, sharing it in, uh, in Facebook. Okay. I think that's it for me. Great. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate your questions. And, Ellen, anything from your, your perspective? No, I'm good. I think that Paul just asked um, pretty much all the questions that I would have had. Great. Okay. Great. All right. And, uh, and, well, and you, uh, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry, Kevin. Is it, is it possible for you to share the, the presentation with us? To, yeah. Okay. What I'll do one, once it's um, once it's all propagated and so forth is I'll put it in YouTube and I'll just shoot you the link to YouTube. Okay, that'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. All right. Well, listen, uh, Kevin. We appreciate your time. We'll uh, we're going to be kind of convening uh, internally here to kind of look at what our options are and um, be in touch. That sounds good to me. Um, let me ask you this. Um, we're going, like I said, we're going to Dallas next week. Um, are we going to talk before then or? Um, <clears throat> uh, possibly. I'm not sure. I mean, we, we, you know, I think we're, we've got to talk through how um, and it, you know, where we would test this, uh, this type of thing out. Um, so I don't want to, you know, promise anything, but it's, it's possible. Okay. Great. Great. Well, uh, is there any, I'm going to ask you one question and we can go, uh, what do you, what do you like best about what I showed you today? Um, I think, I think the ease in which it can help us make connections with folks in the community that are touched by this epidemic. Um, I, it's something that we can, we're already doing things in the community and this seems like something that would interface nicely with what we're doing to help expand upon that reach. Paul, would you agree? Yeah, I think you know, the technology and the combination obviously the marketing processes and you know, Kevin, you're right. It's like you're paying for the exposure. It's what you do with that exposure once you get it. Um, and so I, I do think it, there's opportunity. I, um, it's, it's us thinking about the right way to, and, and who, and who to attract. Um, right. You know, there's, there's a, the initial thought is how do we get patients? Um, another is might be, you know, how do you get family members? Because they're the ones who are advocating for the, for the patients. Um, when we talked about this in another session, uh, our recruiting guy was going crazy because he's like, I can go to a conference and I can do proximity marketing and people may, might see it and then come to our desk to want to be one of our providers or you know, people are an employee or whatever. So I think trying to brainstorm how best to use it um, and this stuff does freak me out. I mean, being an IT guy, I can't, I'm sort of impressed and appalled at the same time uh, that I can just be walking through uh, the airport and you can grab my, you can basically blue jack uh, and, and put something on my phone and then <laughs> then use my phone to connect to the internet real quick. Yeah. You'll, but you'll see technology today, I guess. You know? Yeah. And also with respect to that, Paul, um, uh, the devices do not send messages to cell phones at all. Uh, I mentioned that at the beginning of the presentation, which you probably missed. Um, the, 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 the phones are actually authorized by the users to look for and give them the message that's out there. That's how it works. It does not send the message to phone. That's invasive. It, it could even be spam. Um, and, and that's not how it works. But in the notification screen, the same screen they're getting their Facebook message, because they turned their Bluetooth on, what, what the world needs to be educated with is, hey, when you turn your Bluetooth on, by the way, you're also giving permission for any beacons that are out there to be able to um, have your phone tell you about them. Because that's how it works. It's not the beacon sends the message to the phone. Because at first, that's what I thought. Uh, and I was dead wrong. It's the phone that sees it based on the user authorizing the phone to see it by virtue of putting on their Bluetooth and the phone yeah. tells them about the message. So yeah, I, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. Kevin. I, mean, I, I agree from a legal perspective, right? It's going to be that cultural shift, if you will, of, Hey, now the price of using Bluetooth devices for your earbuds or whatever 
is that you're going to get proximity marketing. There's no way to kind of, and so there'll be a couple of years from now, but then someone's going to make a case that we need to be able to filter certain things out of Bluetooth. And we're just in the early stages. Yeah. Uh, and we, it's been used by apps for years too, Paul. Apps, yeah. it's been, it's so proximity marketing is not new. It's quite old. Um, apps provide the same exact thing. Um, the only difference is someone had to download the app in order for that to happen. Um, and so this, this took the price of apps, like Walmart paid a hundred grand for their app, uh, and made it affordable for companies who want to use the same technology, but don't have the advantage of the branding, um, and, and not have to spend what Walmart spent on an app. All right. I, I think it's cultural and we can go, debate probably back and forth. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It gives you something that you downloaded in the first place and you're willing to do that. This you're not necessarily asking for, you're getting it because of it. Right core service. But in any case, we've got to figure that out because, you know, there's a whole stigma associated with the people that we're trying to help and we don't want to add anything um, that until people feel comfortable is creepy or not. So again, maybe we were using it for people, not necessarily patients, but some other way to get there. Um, and I was going to say, Kevin, I, I have only saw half the presentation, but yeah, I was thoroughly impressed though with the research you did in our company, the things you created in terms of the samples and the thinking about the fact that you're near, you know, we have a place in Dallas. So, uh, just, you know, just kudos in terms of your presentation. So thank you. No, I appreciate that very much, and uh, I'm looking forward to serving you, so go from there. You guys do your due diligence, and I'll do mine. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kevin. Sounds good. Okay. My thanks pleasure. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Okay. You're Have welcome. All right. right. You too. And uh, gentlemen and Ellen, uh, make it a great day, and we'll talk to you again. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thank thanks. you. Bye now. Bye.